uh, these seminars. So I'm I'm going to to share some of my uh, key finding uh, that I did my research in Thailand. So uh, today I would like to present some of uh, my bio bio uh, research that can try to use it to reduce the permeability um, to aim for uh, for more sustainable ground improvement. So um, in this presentation, uh, I try to give you an introduction about my research first. And then I will talk about the objective of uh, research that I'm going to make for this presentation. And I would like to give a bit of background uh, in case that uh, someone may not know about the, the bacteria process, the me bacteria mechanisms, which is the bioclocking process. And later on, I will summarize what uh, we have been done about the methodology and then uh, conclude with some key findings that we observed. And all of this presentation has been published in a, a recent uh, paper, has been published in the Journal of Locks Mechanics and uh, Geotechnical Engineering. So it is uh, open access. So you can just uh, click and download from the link below as well. Um, <clears throat> as of uh, these seminars, uh, Bell and Lodge seminars, so uh, we know that with the uh, Bell and Load initiative, there is a lot more construction going on, especially in, in China and also in Thailand. <laughs> so we have a lot of load and railway construction. And if you look at in Thailand on the light figure, we also have a uh, full main of the uh, high speed railway that going to be built. And actually one, one line into the Northern part of Thailand, not Eastern part that to going to China, is under construction right now. So we are expected that to have a lot more uh, uh, material that has been used, the high carbon embodied material. So uh, they may have some you know, problem going on later on. So it is quite necessary that we can try uh, to improve or to supplement, uh, to find alternative material to uh, make less impact to our environment. So I think my research is aiming for to find the new material that can improve the soil property uh, or to manipulate the soil property um, to be in the right way that we would like to, uh, to use that way for construction. So actually my research um, areas nowadays is, uh, can be divided into two parts. So the, per the first part is about the plan um, to improve the slope stability. <laughs> and the second part is about using the bacteria to, to again, to improve, to make the soil getting uh, more strength and also reduce permeability. But for this presentation, I would like to uh, focus more on the bacteria that we can use it to reduce uh, permeability. Um, before going that, uh, I did my research uh, during my PhD and up to now about the plan to stabilize the slope. As you can see from uh, many research nowadays, the plan actually can provide the root reinforcement to improve the slope stability. But then again, um, I would like to just highlight something that the plan also can um, heal themselves when they got some damage. So that can be a, a potential way uh, to do further research on how uh, the plant can respond to the environment and how can they repair themselves and maybe we can uh, provide, uh, uh, minimize the cost for the maintenance in the future as well. So I did my research on the plant as Dr. Ankit said, uh, together with him during my PhD. And then I also further extend my research um, when I get back to Thailand and then I have a full-scale embankment um, that located in Bangkok right now and uh, I also have PhD students joining me uh, this seminar as well so they are working in the collaborative project together with China and uh, this project is funded by the NRCT that is the funder from Thailand and also we obtained it, the joint funding from the NSFC as well, uh, the from China. And we was working together with Zhejiang University and also University of 
uh, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology uh, in Hong Kong as well. So in this project, we try to see how plan can provide uh, the stability and improve serviceability of the clay embankment. But um, I would like to focus more on the microbial research that um, uh, did test in, I'm not sure my video maybe it rotated a bit, sorry about that. So my bacteria that I use now, um, uh, they can put like a gels as a product, we call it like a dextran, it's type of the sucrose. So this type of gels, when they produce it, they, when they cultivate it in the soil, so they can produce the gel and then they can uh, block the soil pores and hence the reduce permeability. So um, we would like to see how this can perform when we try to cultivate it in the soil. So we are going to talk in detail in this presentation. And um, of course, the idea of using bacteria is just to improve the conventional crowding. So there's a lot of um, equation in Thailand right now. And of course, when you do equations in the area that have the high water level, so you need something that to, to be a barrier to prevent the water getting into uh, the equated area. So usually maybe we can consider the cement columns or uh, the other type um, of the hydraulic barrier as well. So in this case, for the cement column, we may consider to use the jet crowding. Um, we can perform it by injecting the cement into the soil with such a high pressure so that uh, the cement can be mixed into the soil. But with, with that high pressure, so they can have some drawback to cause additional stress and the displacement to the existing structure as well. And again, the cement is kind of the toxics with the high alkaline and it's not good for the environment. So we try to improve it by using the bio crowding method that we are developing right now. Um, we try to use the bacteria to inject it in the soil, but of course with uh, the ability of the bacteria, they can reproduce and distribute it. So basically when they are under uh, injected into the underground water, so they can flow and extend and distribute it themselves. So that means we can have the larger influence zone with a relatively low pressure crowding. So in this case, they have, can be a new potential way um, to reduce the impact to the existing structure because we may not need that such a high pressure uh, that we are using for the conventional crowding. And the bacteria itself is safe and that can be the eco-friendly method as well. So uh, let's come to the objective of, of this presentation. So we would like to develop the new material that can improve the soil property. So first of all, we need to explore whether how and what the growth condition and distribution of uh, the bacteria that can be suitable uh, to grow it in the soil and to investigate as well, when we injected the bacteria into the soil, what is the performance, how they can reduce permeability. <laughs> and later on, of course, with uh, the key feature of the bacteria, they need to eat food. So we need to supply the nutrient, but of course, when you inject it into the soil, the nutrient can be diluted by the underground water. So, we need to quantify um, the extent of the permeability reduction after the bacteria and the medium, the food has been diluted into the underground water, whether it still be effective or not. And we can estimate how much uh, influence on eventually that we can cover with the bacteria in that uh, kind of the treatment area. So uh, this work, I need to thank to Dr. Tri Sukhon. Um, she is assistant professor from the Department of Biomedical Engineering. So uh, uh, we, we are, have uh, five, um, three years collaboration already. 
and then uh, need to thank to the final year student as well that uh, they init initiate this research together with me and, and Dr. Tisukont, and then uh, we develop it further. We got more students come to do uh, this kind of research. So um, in terms of the mechanisms, so initially I try to see the suitable bacteria. So when I try to lead from the literature, so I found the um, three potential bacteria. So first of all is a cyanobacteria that can um, do the photosynthesis. Uh, they can have the light and then the product of them after they uh, have the light, they will generate the product as a soil crust on the surface. So this is quite good that um, when you have the landfall coming in, so you have a, a hard cover and to prevent the landfall infiltrate down to the soil. <laughs> and the other type, the second type of the bacteria is uh, oligotrophic bacteria. So this type of bacteria is quite very common nowadays and they uh, can um, perform urea hydrolysis. So as long as you have the ureas or some waste like that, so they can um, digest it to be a very strong and dense granule to, uh, to combine the soil together. So this is not only reduce permeability, but also in, increase the strength of the soil as well. And the third type of the bacteria that uh, um, I was using for, for this lizard. So I use the gram positive bacteria that can uh, perform the fermentation. The fermentation is like um, when you put everything organic matter into the bottle and then you shut down it without the oxygen. And then they can start digest all that, the bacteria can start digest all that uh, organic uh, material. That is the fermentation. So for this bacteria, when they digested it, um, they can produce the dextran with one type of sugar. Uh, it's like a gel, and then they can block the soil pore. As you can see, this is a result from the SEM that we observe uh, with the sand test. Of course, the, the three different type of bacteria, they can have the different purpose. So the cyanobacteria, of course, they need the light, so they cannot go deeper. And then it's only suitable for the slope and landfill cover. For the second type, oligotrophic bacteria and the gram-positive bacteria, they, um, they don't need um, the light. So that means they can be uh, a little bit deeper than the first type of the bacteria. However, for the second type, um, the growing rate is quite slow. So it may not uh, be suitable for some construction. And for the third one, um, it provides relatively the same um, with the second one, but they have a, a faster growing rate. So that's why we choose the second one, uh, the third one to, uh, to do the research further. However, they also have some limitation. Um, this type of bacteria is really sensitive to the culture medium. If the culture medium is reduced, so the product of the bacteria also reduced as well. So that's why we need to see the effect of the culture mediums on the, especially on the product of the bacteria that can reduce the permeability. And another second feature is that the bacteria can be distributed by themselves as well. This graph shows the flow of the water that can, uh, you know, flow the cell together. And then the cell, when they can attach to the surface and then they can form the biofilms uh, we call polysaccharine. And then they can um, colonize on that area and then eventually uh, block the water flow later on. So this is the idea of cell distributed of the bacteria that we are aiming um, to use this in the lizard as well. And for this lizard, uh, we are testing two things. The first thing is about the globe conditions of the bacteria. And the second thing, of course, we injected that in soil and then we tested what is the permeability of the soil. So for the first one, we try to grow the bacteria in, in the plate first. So we use the solid uh, medium to grow the bacteria. And then we remove it, we transfer it to the liquid medium. Um, 
and then we try to shake the bacteria under the control and temperature. So in this case, we use the, the temperature about 30 degrees with uh, 150 RPM for 72 hours. Um, and then we try to take the sample uh, and then do the test to find how much of the bacteria it is. But first of all, we also have to prepare um, the medium as well. So the medium that we prepare, uh, the major component is the sucrose, of course, is, is, is very important because it is the food for the bacteria to grow it. And the other thing is just for supplement uh, nutrient to encolate the growth condition of the bacteria. And when we mix them, uh, we cultivate them in the liquid medium, then we try to take out a small sample <laughs> every four hours. And then we put that into the spectral photometer below. So this machine is, uh, they can emit the light to the sample. And of course, uh, when the light passes through the sample, that is kind of the organic material. So that uh, organic material will absorb the light. And then that means that if the light was absorbed more and more, that means you have more organics, or especially you have more bacteria, that means. So with this indirect measurement, so we can measure the bacteria growth happen in the, the mediums. So we found that when we mix the bacteria in mediums, we found the light absorption rate is increased during five to 15 hours, and then it becomes straight after uh, 24 hours. So in this case, we uh, take the sample when we, we cultivate it in the liquid medium for 24 hours. And then that means it's already suitable because they cannot grow further than that. And then we bring them to inject that into the soil later on. So we prepare the soil container <coughs> by using the PVC container with a diameter of 10 centimeters. So this PVC container can connect to the following follow, uh, constant head test later on. So only the part of the container, we compacted the soil inside that. We used the Ottawa sand uh, with the compaction about 88%. Uh, <laughs> we have uh, rented holes at the bottom for permeability test. And then we also have three dip, different outlets, uh, three outlets at different positions on the side wall. This is to take some small sample to measure the product of the bacteria. And hence, uh, we leave this one in the water bath, of course, because we can see we, we try to minimize the fluctuation from the air temperature. So we leave it uh, un underneath the water. So the temperature is, can be keep minimized uh, around 27 to 30 degrees. So which is uh, similar to the temperature of the soil uh, in Thailand. So uh, we have uh, seven test series here. So the test series one to three, um, I just try to uh, dilute the concentrations of the bacteria and the mediums. So we have 100% bacteria, which is we have bacteria about 10 milliliters, and then we have the culture medium about 320 milliliters. And then um, for the second series, we have 50% of that. And the third one, we have only 10% of out of that. And we also have the replicate test as well. Um, and for the test uh, series, the, the fourth series to the five and the sixth one, so it's just a duplicate from uh, the first three tests. Uh, we just use that one to only measure the dextran, not for the permeability test. And of course, for the last test series, it's just for the lefferent test that we have the soil and we have the culture medium alone uh, without any bacteria. So we need to see that, uh, so that we can confirm any permeability that we deal from that one is from the effects of the bacteria. So um, we also have, uh, we also did take out some sample um, to find the dextran measurements. And then we convert that 
the weight of the extract into the volume. And then um, we can uh, use that volume to consider how velocity of the soil has been reduced from the volume of the dextrans. And then we use the cosinic Kalman equation to try to calculate the soil permeability that can be comparable to uh, the measurement result. And for uh, the key finding, I would like to emphasize the, the highlights of the finding that we have. Uh, from the left figure here is the percent of the dextran that we observe from uh, a small sample that we take out from the soil container uh, along the time. <clears throat> we found that after five <coughs> to 15 days, there is a lot of increase in dextran due to the bacteria, of course, up to around 15 to 20 percent. And then when we stop supply the medium, Oh, I need to tell you that I supply the medium, um, you know, two times a week uh, at early two weeks. And then after that, after 17 days, <laughs> uh, the medium has been stopped. Uh, we can see that the next time also remain constant. And, um, but it didn't reduce uh, after we, we stopped supplying the medium. So that is a good sign that it may be sustainable in the longer term as well. And we observe something that um, the dextran at the top surface is always less than the other part of the container. This may be natural variation, but we observe that in every single container. So that's why we, we bring the sample to do the SEM test. And what we found is that when we zoom in into the soil particle, and we found a similar thing. We have the particle, we have the gel that produ produced by the bacteria but we spotted uh, a very white dot along the soil grains and the gels. And we was wondering what is that? So we zoom in again and we found that it's have like on the light figure, we found that some foreign colonies happen on the top surface. Uh, this is happened, this kind of the type of the fungi that happen because they have the oxygen, they have the medium rich into the soil surface. So that's why they can grow and provide the competition to uh, our bacteria. So that's why it's at the top surface may not be so effective uh, compared in the deeper uh, layer that we found a lot of uh, colonies of the dextran that you can see from the left figures. There is like a lounge chef of the bacteria here together with the gels and they live happily here. So, that's why I come to this result that we found that the top surface is less than the other part. And again, um, we also try to uh, see how much different concentration uh, will affect the dextran, will affect the product of the bacteria. We found that when we reduce the concentration to 50%, the dextran also reduced by almost a half as well. So when we reduce to 10%, it's again, it reduces. So it seems that the dextran is reduced uh, in the same proportions as the concentration. So this might be the problem when it diluted into the cloud to see how much permeability with this amount of the dextran. So then we bring the soil sample to do permeability test. Sorry for the, the, the text, I think, um, because of I'm, I'm using now in the tablet and then maybe some tech is just getting bigger. So um, this is the result for a full concentration, 100% concentration. So um, we observe uh, the reduction of permeability starting from five days to around 10 or 15 days. And then we can see that initially permeability is about 10 minus four and it dropped to 10 minus six, uh, just within the 15 days. So this reduction of permeability is quite uh, good compared to the conventional method that we mix the semen um, together with the sand. Uh, five to 10% of semen is quite a lot, but we use only less than 1% of the bacteria in the soil. And we have quite comparable uh, permeability reduction to the conventional method. And then when we stop applying uh, supplying the medium to the soil, we found that the permeability still remain almost the same. 
and we was wondering again so we just put it into the oven that is to kill all the bacteria and then we recompacted it so we found that um, all the permeability is quite uh, remain almost the same at 10 minus 6. So this means that uh, this way can uh, be more sustainable. So even without the food, the bacteria is maybe keep dying, but the product of bacteria is still there and can minimize the permeability. And uh, we also try to dilute uh, the medium to be 50 and 10 percent concentration, and then we tested it. What is the permeability? Um, of course, you, you remember that the dextran is reduced proportionally to, to the concentration. Then we also expect that permeability will be reduced in the same proportion as well. But then uh, interestingly for the 50% uh, in the blue color on the left figure here is almost close to the 100%. And then when the concentration reduced to 10%, it just like no effect at all is almost close to the sample that without bacteria at all. So this gives us um, some um, confusion initially. So we just take uh, the, the sample to do the SEM test. So what we observed from, from, from the SEM, we found that with 100%, the gel is completely filled the void. And with the 50% of the test, uh, all the microvoids also can be filled with the gels. But with 10% on um, the bottom lip, uh, we feel that the, the dextran now is not enough to fill any void. That's why there has no, almost no effect uh, similar to uh, the test without the bacteria as in the bottom light. So that's why we got this result that um, the bacteria still remain effective at 50%, but uh, when they deal to 10% is no longer effective on that. And yeah, that's it come to the conclusion that I already presented. So the first point is about the growing condition. We, we grow at about 30 to 33 degree uh, uh, 24 hours before we install it into uh, the soil. And we found that um, the dextran concentration can be increased up to 20% why the permeability can be reduced um, to approximately around 10 minus six uh, after five to uh, 10 days of the installation. And uh, when we stop supply culture mediums, um, the dextran concentration remain almost the same and then the permeability also remain almost the same as before. And when uh, we try to dilute the concentrations of the medium, uh, we found that it still be effective to reduce the permeability. But then when we dilute more and more until 10%, it's no longer effective anymore. So this is all the key finding that we observed from this uh, microbial research. And uh, now we are in the way that to progress to the field test. So Hopefully that we can also again summarize all the new findings from, from the lab scale and the field scale and combine it and to make use in the industry uh, in, in the day later. So uh, that's it for my presentation. And uh, I would like if uh, the situation of that uh, COVID pandemic has gone. So I would like to welcome you all to uh, Thailand and have a nice Thai food and to visit our uh, lovely university in Thailand. So uh, thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, please let me know. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, uh, thanks Dr. Virun. Uh, so it's a great presentation. Uh, so now we welcome audience to uh, for any discussion. Oh, sorry, I just noted that my my microphone is doesn't work. So maybe I use the microphone in the tablet. I'm not sure no, you can. No, it was it, it's good. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. okay, good then.
So we, when I have a question to, to ask you, yeah. so in your last conclusion, so you mm. mentioned that uh, this uh, method uh, work well for both uh, micro and macro ones. Mm. I found out that you uh, use uh, the, the sand as a mm. medium. Mm -hmm. So I, my understanding is uh, sand is uh, quite have uh, Uniform uh, pore size distribution. So okay. how how can what what's your comment? If we are working with more uh, silty material, then we have more micro and macro walls. Okay. Um. Yeah. Thanks for your question. That is very good question that I'm taking now because I'm applying into the silt, silty sand, and again we chip to what to the clay. Um, I was worried about that as well because um, in some certain void that is very small pore. So uh, I think before we think of the permeability and the clocking the, the, the water flow. So in some certain void that very small, um, usually the bacteria need to attach to the surface of the, the sand or soil particle. But then with a very small void, they cannot grow. So that is very uh, important problem that when we try to apply into the soil before thinking of micro and macro void. So uh, even the growth condition is also the problem. So I think when you play around with bacteria, I believe if you already play around with some bacteria, they have some problem, uh, especially uh, growing it in the clay, which is very small, small void on that. And of course that will be the major problem right now that we are trying to, to figure it out. Um, we need to have some new technique to, to make it, uh, have the better growth condition first. So, um, yeah. And uh, in the second point about the macro and micro void, of course, um, I think the flow will be totally different from uh, what we expect from the sand material. So, uh, but we need to try out first. We, we are not too sure yet in this position, okay? I think I had a little bit uh, side chat. So I, me and also uh, Anki uh, work mm. with uh, bow chart. So mm. bow chart has a uh, very high uh, specific surface area. And also mm. its wing size is also can be compared with the sandy material. So mm. I don't know whether this is a, uh, some new direction we can think about a big size material but also yeah. with a high specific area so that we can yeah, yeah, enhance actually. the attachment of the bacteria on the yeah. soil surface i i totally agree with you that actually is uh, the new technique that we are we are going for so you look at through it already so i think many, many some people have been studying that so um, my, my intention right now is to just put some, uh, a bigger void particle to let it grow first. So let's say if you have some silty sand with maybe you still want to reduce more permeability, right? But then when you try to put the bacteria in, it doesn't grow well. So we found that if we mix some with the biochar as the Ankit has been using it. So the growth condition is better and initial permeability is increased. So that is what, not what we expected. But then when for the time it's getting past longer and longer, when bacteria keep growing, and then we found that permeability, permeability is keep reducing again. So, and then eventually it's maybe more than the original uh, um, the, the value. So that can be the impact of combined two, you know, uh, two material together. But uh, we need to think in terms of the layer application as well, because in the layer application, so we need to mix the biochar. So uh, some certain some certain situa situation, we cannot do that. Let's say we already have the embankment. We don't want to compact it again. So um, we can only inject the bacteria to there. So we, we also need to find another new technique. Um, really good idea. and. Yeah, and I am also looking forward to the further collaboration to, you know, to make use, we try to make use, we try to make the research to be more practical in, especially in Thailand, um, 
uh, we, we try to aim to push the research into uh, the practical engineer that can make use immediately. So that's why uh, if uh, we have further collaborations and uh, exchange some idea, so maybe we can come up with a new opportunity as well. Yeah, uh, so <clears throat> Dr. Pula, uh, uh, you have some. <laughs> no, of course, a very interesting presentation. Um, unfortunately, I am not a biology and uh, something <laughs> no, for me is interesting. And uh, uh, one question may be, if we uh, will grow uh, such, uh, if we will uh, use such type of bacteria near the buildings, to which depths of uh, ground uh, they can uh, develop? Mm -hmm. um, for the depth, actually, I, I, did, I did to play a lot with them in the field. And um, I have the, the space in the garden, and then I try to put the bacteria in. And I think when I try to, to inject that in, in one or one and a half meter, that's only that that I try. And they can grow really well. And even they cause, I can say they cause a little bit of problem about the drainage. Because when I try to, 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 to rinse the water to the garden, so um, we need it to be drained away easily, right? But when we try to put this bacteria in, so it's grow quite well more than I expected. Um, but of course, that is the deepest layer that I try. So uh, we are aiming for the field application. So uh, hopefully we can have the boreholes uh, because in Thailand we have the clay layer overlain by the sand layer. So we are aiming to that sand layer for the deep equations such as the sharp construction for the tunneling. So hopefully we can we can pre-treatment them, maybe uh, do some pre-injection to them, and then we, when we construct the sharp construction, so the bacteria can grow within 10 to 15 days, and then they can reduce the permeability. So it's uh, on the process that we are planning to put it into the borehole as well, and hopefully the depth that we are targeting is uh, more than 20 meter which is the sand layer in Bangkok. So that is the, the way forward that uh, we are aiming to. Oh, thank you. Yeah. 1.7 meter is okay for us. <laughs> 20 meter is very huge, of course. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are not sure the problem anyway. So I'm also discussing with my um, uh, collaborator uh, and she said they may have some problem when at, at such a deeper depth like that. So. <clears throat> okay, thank you. So any other questions? Um, we don't, uh, may I ask one? Yeah, uh, sure. Did you check uh, in the lab uh, <clears throat> how bacteria grows in soil with different density? I think it's a different been, density. Uh, yeah, different uh, density not yet. Soil. We only have uh, one density. Mm -hmm. uh, we we try the the one that I choose. We try to use the, the try to be a maximum density as uh, we can. Mm -hmm. So first of all, that uh, of course we are aiming for the construction purpose. So we are looking forward to the high mm -hmm. uh, density of the soil. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is, with the high density, you have the less void in that one. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it's the worst condition for bacteria to grow. If you have more water, so bacteria mm -hmm. can grow uh, freely on that. So that is kind of the situation that we choose. But we haven't been valued the, the density yet. Mm -hmm. How about the moisture content? I mean, uh, did you control uh, moisture content? Fully saturated. Fully saturated. Not, not understand. It's too complicated for me now. Okay. Um, no, I, I just want bacteria. to yeah, understand how bacteria growth will change with the moisture um, content. Indeed, I believe it changed for, for this type of the bacteria. Because this type of bacteria is need fermentation. They, they don't like oxygen. 
So as long as you have the air in the unsaturated zone, mm -hmm. so they may not good for the bacteria to grow. So mm -hmm. the, the most effectiveness is the fully saturated condition. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've been thinking from field application, like uh, yeah. maybe for bacteria growth, do you want to grow bacteria inside the soil directly or you want to grow in the lab and then inject it? We, 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 plan, we plan to cultivate it in, in the soil. In um, the soil itself. Yeah, o otherwise, otherwise we eliminate the purpose of the cell distribution of the bacteria, right? So mm -hmm. there is some research them together already and then in, just throw it into the soil like you mix some uh, mm -hmm. material to the soil but then they didn't grow in the soil so that mm -hmm. will uh, be the different purpose for, for us mm -hmm. because I was thinking if you grow before and then you inject it maybe we, you need we, some technique actually we did grow in 24 hours mm -hmm. um, of course you need to have enough a sufficient number of the bacteria. Otherwise, it's just, if you have too few bacteria, then it's keep dying in the soil. Mm -hmm. So you need to have enough sufficient number of bacteria so, so that they can reproduce themselves and then extend uh, the colonies. Okay. And maybe one minor uh, thing I want to know. I mean, just what is the cost of this cultivation of bacteria in terms of okay. concentration? Um, actually, good point. Um, I I can tell you I brought the bacteria around 900 baht, <laughs> less than a thousand so, baht. Uh, it will be around uh, in US uh, divided by five, maybe 200 RMB. 200 RMB. So divided yeah. by six again in US I, I got I got that one and then I it will be 30 30 to 40 US dollar, right? So yeah. Yeah, 30, 40 US dollar is how, how much concentration? I mean, how much? No, you need to cultivate it. So the cultivation is quite simple. You only need the food with this so code and that that food, I think is maybe allow another 200 RMB. Mm -hmm. And then you need to have a cup. So it can be any cup as well. Mm -hmm. So you can do the mass production as long as you have more food to them. And then they just mm -hmm. extend in the plate. So I think that the cost for the bacteria actually is cheap. Mm -hmm. And and this type of bacteria do not need uh, to take care much. So you don't need the advanced equipment. So the cost is surprisingly um, less than I was expected. Mm -hmm. So um, if we really need to use, we only need to use the 10 ml milliliters uh, mm -hmm. into the soil um, in, in that container. So basically we use less than 1% of mm -hmm. the soil by the weight. Mm -hmm. and, and so that it, of course, it's relatively cheaper than the cement itself that we mix into the soil to, to this certain condition. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Um, <clears throat> so, any questions? Mm -hmm. Professor uh, Joe? No, no, no. Oh, yes. No more. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think, uh, yeah, today, uh, Total Verum uh, gave us a very interesting lecture. Um, I think uh, the related technology can be used uh, in the field for uh, wide applications. I think this is a good, good, good topic. Thank you very much for giving us Thank you the again. lecture. Thank you so much. And ho hopefully uh, someday later, we can welcome you to Thailand. If, <laughs> um, if you come to Thailand, just please let me know. Of course, um, okay. <laughs> you, you know, uh, Thailand, yeah. we have a good food. I'm waiting for, yes. you know, open up for the foreigners as well. So for sure, I will take care of you. And you know that my my university is just right next to the airport. So if you land oh. to the airport, I can quickly pick you up. Like I, I did pick Ankit 
when he came to Thailand last time. Yeah, 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 yeah. He mentioned. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I, I look forward to and it because I have Thomas been to Thailand Thomas before. Thomas also visited us last time, thanks to him as uh, well. Yes, yes. I, he I, also I, gave a good lecture in uh, another university. And ho hopefully hopefully you, you enjoy the time in Thailand. <laughs> yeah, yes, sure. Yeah. And also now uh, is Holy New Year of Thailand now. Uh, just last week, yes. Okay. We, oh, last week. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. 13th of April is a Thailand New Year. So um, that's why I spend time with my, my sons and stop doing work for a while and let my students have the holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much for, for this and hope to have a further collaboration. And mm -hmm. I, I will try to attend the other seminar. Hopefully I, I can get more detail on that. Thank you for organizing this one. We are very grateful for your time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, bye bye. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>